Hi, my name is Joel. In this episode of Unplugged, I talk to DJ Isis van der Wel. When Isis was 12 years old, she bought her first house record. At 16, she was DJing in the hottest clubs in the Netherlands and soon she found herself touring the whole world. Nowadays, she is seen as one of the first female pioneers in electronic music. I visited Isis at her home in Amsterdam. We talk about what she's trying to achieve with her music, the importance of emptying your mind, and what is needed to experience magic in life. So, when you go back to your in your teens, you were you became a big name, I think, mm. pretty fast. And when you look at the next few decades, could you do you see different chapters in what you were doing? Yeah, for sure. So yeah, after 10 years, I think the end of the 90s were very boring. Then everybody was recycling everything mm. and there was no new ideas and the hype was so big and the attention, you know, there was so much energy from everywhere flowing to that rather uninteresting music mm. because it was such a revolution, you know? I mean, everybody was like, oh, wow, men and women can dance together. Mm. They don't have to go to dancing classes, they can just dance together and there's nobody being being stupid about it, you mm. know, you can just do that. And hey, wow, uh, gays and, and heteros dance together. And uh, actually everybody dances together, you mm. know? So it, that was already so powerful that I guess the music got a little bit sidetracked there. Mm. And how and was I, this for you, that period? Well, I really was very disappointed about the music and maybe even a bit sad. Uh, because I thought it was going to be the world's revolution, really. I thought like, wow, finally, you know, mm. where hippies got stuck in their ide ideology. Uh, we can actually now make it uh, realistic. But then commercial, the commercial world dived on top of it. And, and what is then for you, what is make it realistic? Make what realistic? Uh, what was your dream there? Uh, I think um, a revolution of love and respect, you know, like... Uh, we there's so much beauty in this planet and we can enjoy it much more if we start to learn to share it with each other mm. and um, well there's different energy fields that are pulling society in different directions and what I find interesting is what is the what's the bottom line you know what's what's causing mm. what's happening is that what's the um, the intention of the people who started it mm -hmm. and what's left of it in the end mm -hmm. and and uh, I think that the first people to get back to the beginning of, of electronic music or how that all evolved um, also understand uh, love peace and happiness mm -hmm. you know and they and they also have more feeling of respect and sharing and, and a positive way of innovation but let's go back to uh, my uh, process in that or how I've seen it evolve. I think around the year 2000 there was a breaking point. It was the time in, I think, 99, uh, Knights of the Jaguar came out by uh, Underground Resistance by Rolando. And um, this is uh, a big turning point in electronic music. Um, First of all, it had the uh, acoustic uh, strings in them and it was like an orchestra playing, you know, mm -hmm. rather different than most typical techno or house music was at the time. Actually, kind of is in the middle because it has house vibes and techno vibes together. Um, very up-tempo. And then there was another uh, thing happening and to me a record that really uh, marks that period in time is um, Bomo Plage from Isolé mm. and it's a, it's a track, it's, it's the beginning of minimal basically, it's, it's down tempo, relatively down tempo for that time, it's very empty, has a lot of space and it uh, evokes uh, 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 whatever came from there to me, mm. it was really like, hey wow, we're starting all over again, you know, good, let's just wipe it and we'll paint again. Mm. And that happened, and then the minimal scene went always. It became techno on one side, it became very experimental on the other side. And then I think around 10 years ago, another 10 years later, there was a big switch 
uh, coming from that more experimental sound where um, yeah there were a lot of the hype went so there was uh, the, the, the 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 music went slower um, the BPMs went slower so there's this music allows a lot of a possibility to uh, enjoy it both as a listener and as a dancer mm. and it brings interesting prospects because all of a sudden you don't have to be on the dance floor all the time anymore to enjoy that music yeah. you can also have a good conversation <laughs> and not just be silent all the time uh, and um, more mature people who are mostly a little bit more wiser than young people can also join the party mm. uh, for a longer period of time and this of course is very necessary because we are all getting older uh, and um, I believe that it's also about connecting generations with each other mm. it's not just like back in the days like you break from your parents you become a teenager you, you want to uh, uh, resist whatever was there and you want to find your own path and when you find it you become a boring person too you know yeah. it's not mm. like that anymore and it's not needed anymore also um, so I, I really see that it's growing up and generations are joining each other and different backgrounds are joining each other mm. and there are no more boundaries unless you build them in your head mm. that's where we are now yes that's mm. where I ended up mm. <laughs> and there's also no more boundaries in my DJ set where I was felt forced to play the music people like and you know, I mean, of course as a DJ you can't be selfish you can't be a producer you know if you're a producer if you just produce you can make whatever you like, nobody will complain about it. Mm. But as a DJ, it's like being a band on stage. You have a dialogue with the audience. Yeah. Of course, you have a repertoire. You stick to the repertoire in terms of... I mean, I wouldn't play something I don't enjoy playing. But I'm much more versatile and broad in my music than mm. I used to be. I'm definitely no longer a, a typical house or techno DJ, mm. which, I, which I was back in the 90s. Yeah, and it's probably not just because that we are in different stage in dance music, but it has also something to do with you. So, so, so what when you look at yourself, what changed within you as a, as a human being, and how is this reflected in how you DJ mm. or make music? Uh, change in me as a human being. Well, I think I more remembered who I am. And I kind of forgot along the way because if you're a young person and all of a sudden your your uh, mix albums are in the national charts and everybody's pulling you and pushing you and putting you in places where you might not even want to be or you shouldn't be, mm. but you do it because you're young and you're you're like oh wow what kind of world is this let's go take a look oh and I put my energy in it and people like it and they want you they want to keep you there you know you've been you've been pushed and pulled around in a way that it is. Uh, blurring your view so what was very good for me is to withdraw from the roller coaster I was in and um, mm, yeah m become more meditative about what I'm doing in life mm -hmm. and reflecting on my actions and also what I find important values and how I want to celebrate and the funny thing is I was with another very popular Dutch DJ which I, I I don't really hang out with because he plays very different music than I do but I don't know for one or another reason we were on the same table and we had a fortune cookie and uh, I opened the fortune cookie and uh, it says remember what made you successful and work that and I was like wow oh, that's great <laughs> let's go back to where I came from and what my d real drive is in life and not what other people want me to put my energy in. Mm. Um, if you put it into words, what is your real drive in life? Um, well, um, I had some visions and one of my... Uh, uh, um, the things I, s I saw was always one, was something I, I saw. Later I found out the Buddhists have been saying that for thousands of years already, but I saw it all of a sudden I was like, Oh, everything is connected with each other, you know, it's, nothing is separate. We like to 
uh, extra things in a way in the Western world, like we want to isolate it and uh, make, pretend it's a loose particle, but nothing is loose, everything is connected and everything influences each other. So when I realized that, I was like, okay, so what do I find important values? What do I want to um, put my energy in? And then I was very much inspired by the origins of dance music and um, the working of uh, ceremony and ritual. Um, and I also believe that eh, even if you go to a DJ set um, uh, and you have a crowd, that is kind of like a ritual, you know? I mean, you could compare it in a way with a shaman and a tribe. Mm -hmm. I mean, unfortunately, it has been forbidden to most Westerners to enjoy a live fire, real fire. But I think that's such a powerful ingredient, you know, if you can dance around the fire, preferably outside, uh, under the stars or the moon, it's like that's what we all should be doing at least once a month, yeah. I think. But, well, we simulate that eh, in our clubs and in our parties. But there's also places where you can still ha uh, share these values and enjoy them together. Um, and there are some festivals and places I know and I've seen in the past 20 years throughout the world that it's very clear that these groups of people are also inspired by those values. Mm. The unifying aspects, I call them. Mm. Eh, the full moon, the, the, the fire that burns. And the music we are all surrounded with at the same time, which I think is part of the um, uh, the, the the value. Anybody who has ever enjoyed dancing on a dance floor with a group uh, have experienced. Mm. And it's like hey, I also make jokes like in the in the sixties said make love not war. I mean, of course, it's still very true, but I also say like dance don't fight. Mm. You know why why would you want to fight if you can dance? Yeah. There must have been some really bad things happening to you that you forgot that. So how can we remember what is right? And how can we remember what is helpful for us as human beings living together with so many of us uh, on this one planet we have? Mm. And uh, yeah, I find that important and inspiring and I, w I want to feed the, the dancing part. Mm. Cool. And it, and it, the amazing thing about dance music, I think, it's not only unifying with each other, but it also unifies with yourself. Like you can, can connect with yourself if it's really good music. Yeah, you're giving me goosebumps now, uh, as you say it. Yeah, I think it's very meditative. Mm. And uh, what's also interesting aspect of the electronic music scene is that there's very little lyrics. I don't. I'm not against lyrics, but I see that if you start using your 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 the verbal part of your brain. Um, the um, observing uh, uh, qualities are being corrupted. Mm. Like if you stop thinking, for instance, then you can perceive information in such a different way than if you are constantly analyzing and uh, uh, judging. Um, and it will color the picture, you know? If you, if you, if you have the, avail uh, the ability to empty your mind and, and perceive, mm. then you can see and uh, that, that it helps a lot if you... Exactly, yeah. Was there, was there a specific turning point in your life that it became more meditative for you? Or is it, was it a gradual process? Um, well, yes especially because I, I come from um, a very talking family. <laughs> my mom loves to talk, my sister too, I also like talking. And everybody's talking and there's a lot of words and a lot of books and newspapers. And uh, But I started to experiment with these, with these things. Like I like to be informed, but I don't want to have an information overload. Mm. So what I do for instance is something practical like a newspaper. I read half of the year, no newspaper. Why? because I want to have a life myself as well. Mm. And if I constantly get all that information of things happening far, far away, you know, it's so much, so many things happening, it's not even everything's in there, you know? It's like, pfft, get crazy, but I want to stay informed too. So then I decided, hey, how can I help? I like the day and the night. Uh, I can help myself have the best of both worlds in this case, uh, by uh, not reading at certain points, like consciously not doing it. Mm. And uh, help yourself 
to stay uh, critical about your own consciousness too. Mm. But there's other things that help me see, like studying history of dance music in general. Uh, I've read a very inspiring book called Drumming at the Edge of Magic. And it was uh, written by one of the two drummers of the Grateful Dead, mm. named Mickey Hart. And, uh, Hart. and the funny thing is that the book it starts in the Stone Age. So it, it comes from where we started as human beings on this planet, like playing drums basically, up to uh, 1992, exactly the year that I started DJing. Mm. So for me it was like Bible when I got that book, it was like wow, it explains everything from where it came from to where I started and it helped me understand a lot about rhythm and uh, the law of entrainment, which I also find uh, highly that? fascinating. Uh, well, the funny thing is that you asked me what it is and it's a Dutch invention from the year 1662, if I say it right, but somewhere in the 17th century, one of the two brothers of Hagens, you know, I'm not sure which one now, but he found out that if you put two clocks next to each other, they start ticking in the same rhythm. Have you ever heard about that phenomena? Mm -hmm. Or women who start to have their period yeah. at the same time if they hang out together. Now, this uh, is the law of entrainment. And it says that two things, but it can be objects, it can be living creatures, it can be happenings that are similar but not the same. They have the automatic uh, 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 way of, of being attracted to each other mm -hmm. and they will start to form a new pattern together. And you have it also on a synthesizer with an oscillator function where frequencies start to uh, grasp to each other yeah. and form a new f frequency. Of vibration <clears throat> and it's super interesting because it works it's like a, the domino effect in a way and if you know if you're aware of that principle then you can also make sure that you're not being part of a negative domino spiral or mm. maybe you cause a positive one and you choose to resonate with your surrounding in a more conscious way yeah and as a DJ or performer, you play with frequencies as well, of course, and the frequencies of the people in the in the area as well. Yeah. So you're true. Um, how does it, have you ever experimented with this consciously? How this works? Well, um, it it uh, we are all part of the same wholeness, yeah. So if I would want to change that of a group, I better have a very powerful music story. Uh, to switch people's minds who are not willing to uh, get down with the, with the project. And if there is one person who has very negative energy, you know, it can ruin the party for everyone, you know. Um, so it, it's a sensitive thing, but you can help uh, create a space where it's more likely to, uh, to flower. In a, in a beautiful way and you can use also other elements than music like you can touch the senses in many ways like with you can work with image and with uh, with smell for instance I like mm. to work with uh, uh, an aroma jockey uh, I work with as well and a, and a visual artist as well because together we create this organic flow um, yeah this speaks for itself basically mm. Yeah. So what have you been uh, creating in the last couple of years? <clears throat> well, um, um, I started to do these parties under the name All Is One back in 2000 when I, I had the whole... I was so fed up with the boring thing like yeah and then you play one o'clock and the other one plays three o'clock and uh, you have to stop now because it's five o'clock and we're gonna close and uh, it's like pfft, why don't we live by the clock, you know? Why don't we just live by the art or the atmosphere? But um, I understand how things have come to where they came and we're all like children of the industrial revolution. So it's, there's a certain logic behind things. I can see that, but there's also a logic behind um, what I'm saying. And, and if you create, that's another thing I learned from the book. It says, if you want to have magic in your life, you have to set the table for it. Meaning you have to leave a space empty for magic to occur. If you polish everything on forehand, if you calculate and de determine uh, what things should be like, 
you will block out magic for sure. You will not find it because you cannot even have it. You know, yeah. you didn't create yeah. any space for That's it. Beautiful. And and that is what I'm trying to uh, give or create or let let exist basically. It's leaving space empty and welcoming the magic. Mm. So you create a safe haven uh, or a frame in which it can um, live or, uh, uh, or, or creation can start by itself. And uh, I've also learned if you bring like-minded spirits together who uh, can park their ego in a way that they they were still capable of uh, uh, doing what they're doing, but they're not uh, held back by personal interest and go for communal value mm. and yeah, want to build and create together. Then you can do everything. You can you can grow beyond what your personal limitations would be. Mm. That's beautiful. And and um, I thought, oh, well, what what did we forget about here in Europe and I've been studying the indigenous tradition we had here with celebrating the the coming and going of the seasons basically the the, the season of the seed sowing the season of the harvesting and the season of saying goodbye and also death which we are a bit afraid of in this world but it's an interesting aspect of life and also gives you the reference point to understand what you are doing mm. and uh, how to validate things uh, in a, in a in a real way and I found out that a lot of other people also have the need to share uh, in, 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 a, in a ceremonial way, uh, celebrate in a ceremonial way. And there's a beginning and there's an end. And there are certain values that you respect, communal values. And they are about content. Yeah? They're about quality, not about quantity. Mm. And quantity is like, it's a, that's just numbers, you know. i rather have quality. So, um, yeah, the past five years or so I've been experimenting a lot with that and finding a lot of other people who are also into uh, remembering the ancient knowledge and integrating it with the modern wisdom we got. Hmm. So how do you make this practical when you organize something? What does it look like then? <clears throat> well, um, I try to uh, not pro program events like most Westerners do. So there's no business frame, like it's not made to make money. I mean, it makes money sometimes, sometimes it makes a lot of money because it's so successful, but that's not the intention. The intention mm. is we are offering a certain celebration with a certain uh, uh, philosophy. Mm. So whatever the philosophy is, we let it be the inspiration of the rest of the event. And it can be who's gonna play there or not, uh, what kind of image we will use, what kind of food and drink we will serve uh, to uh, where it will be at and uh, what kind of uh, rituals will be uh, involved because you can have like an opening ceremony or you can have uh, a certain uh, altar on which people can uh, uh, like for instance when we celebrate the, 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 the uh, Sawen it's called, it's, the, uh, it's like the it's the the event that was well Halloween kind of comes from there you know mm. uh, it's about saying goodbye to the the cycle of life and people do that in their own personal way and they all can you know like somebody wants to remember a, a beloved one who passed away or will just accept that it's going to be winter again and there will be no more mm. leaves on the trees and uh, we might as well also think about what we're going to lose from ourselves from the last season that is no longer of purpose for us and creating space yeah like like the way Hinduists say through Shiva you know something that we also really do not understand well enough yet I think here is that the ending is a new beginning mm -hmm. after the destruction eh, there is a place for creation and it doesn't have to be a violent destruction mm -hmm. this can also be a very natural coming and going of nature mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Hmm. Hmm. So how did you get all this wisdom? Is it like a continuous search for you in life to seek new sources or how does it work for you? Uh, well, I think that uh, there's been a lot of things already investigated by other people. So what a big mistake is from mankind is that we have a tendency to destroy everything that was there from 
the others, you know, like, oh, everything's bad, let's destroy it all, and we start all over again. And it's like, right, there was nothing good there, are you gonna learn that all again? You know, you're gonna make the same mistakes again and again and again. And you could also say like, hey, what happened in the past? And then rhythm is very interesting because you can see these patterns, you know, there's always patterns and the patterns, they keep on repeating. So have people say, if you want to know about the future, just look at the past. And it's like that, you know, and we're living in, 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 a, in a constant recycling of what we've been doing. But the problem is that we uh, haven't learned yet how to uh, be critical about ourselves. Mm. And that is like uh, uh, kind of the arrogance of mankind that we think we're superior to nature and uh, we are superior to the ones that don't do, that look different from us and uh, if we all keep on thinking like that we're gonna definitely destroy ourselves so if we can step out of that thinking and start looking around and accept that every uh, part of the world there's knowledge that we can learn from and we can see the parallels because there's so many parallels then we can also see the patterns mm -hmm. and when we can see the patterns we can break them if we don't like them but at first we have to recognize them and we yeah. have to accept that they are there and I guess rhythm taught me that you know that I can see how it works with rhythm and patterns and very conscious about it mm. yeah, that's really awesome do you have certain um, rituals or meditational practices in your own personal life? Um, well, not as much as I would want to, but that's why I like the full moon a lot. I think if we would um, see the importance of unifying aspects such as the full moon, which is there for every single living being on the planet, you know? Because what, what represents the full moon? <clears throat> the, f the moon in general, it comes and it goes, right? So it has already the the cycle of life in it it has the moment of disappearing and it is the moment of growth and it will go back again and it will grow again it comes and it goes and this is how life is so if uh, we can learn from the moon itself then the moon is there for everybody it is not uh, being owned by uh, a nation <laughs> Uh, and uh, everybody can see it, even if you're imprisoned or if you're stuck somewhere. Mm. So if we can learn to worship the moon, basically, or the unifying aspect of the moon, which has been a tradition for a long time already in uh, many indigenous cultures, but we can regain that, that knowledge, as a lot of Westerners have done already. But if we would share it and we would all appreciate it, the, the unifying aspect, then we really have a bonding element, you know, that is there for everyone and it's for free. And uh, I think it's a very harmless and, and uh, uh, yeah, it teaches us a lot. So it's, it's harmless and it's informative at the same time. Hmm. It's for free, it doesn't pollute, I just see good things in the moon. <laughs> I had it earlier this week, I was sitting in the sun on my own. I was just so grateful for the sun, like, okay, this is awesome that I can feel the, the warmth on my skin and just can live here. And it's the same thing with the moon. If you can um, have a sense of wonder about it and that we share this with, with all of us together, mm. that can already be unifying. Okay, exactly like, that. Like you're saying, you first have to see it and otherwise it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah, or it's just like a big uh, lamp up in the sky, you know, like all these other lamps that are on the street. Mm -hmm. Which kind of like what it seems like at first, if you can't see any further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah, the seasons are also important uh, in that, on that behalf, but that has an issue because, of course, on every part of the planet, the seasons work different. Yeah. But then in Europe, we have a similar path of seasons which we can understand mm. uh, and relate to. And I, I'm sure that every part of the world it will work in that way as well. Mm. So when you um, have a ritual around a new season or a performance with a new season, does, does the music then change or can it yes. remain the same or what happens? I find it very interesting to see what music does inside or outside the city. Like, 
inside the city, I mean, we all know the, the music term urban, but um, I think urban to me is a lot of music that has an industrial signature, mm. like uh, even, it, it, yeah, it could be uh, techno as well, for instance, or uh, very polished stuff, very urban. Yeah, like if I go in the streets in the city, I also feel like I need to dress differently because I'm like, oh, people have fashion here and they're like, uh, oh, it's weird if I walk barefoot, I put my shoes on, you know, and um, if I go outside in nature, I feel not just that the outer forms change, but also the music changes, like you can hear the little details and the s subtleness of a, an insect or a leaf waving in the wind, you know, things you can't really determine any longer if you're in the city, there's these cars coming and all this information in the just polluting your uh, consciousness. So you need harder music. You need music that grabs you by yeah. the throat because otherwise you can't hear it through, uh, through all the other noises. And if you're in the nature, you can have very subtle, beautiful, silent stuff that makes a big impression. Mm. And uh, yeah, it depends a lot where I am, what kind of angle, uh, how subtle can I go? That's mm. also something I wonder sometimes. And uh, sometimes it also helps for us to, uh, if we're with a group embodying some uh, ceremonial event, to have a, a real ritual or a cleansing, you know, there's many ways of energetic cleanse. I mean, it's like uh, all these indigenous tribes have their own ways to do it, but you can you can smoke places out, you can sing them, you know, it's, it's all about energy. And I think the intention is what's most important there. Mm -hmm. The the means how people do it it's, it's uh, secondary in my opinion, mm. but uh, yeah that sometimes helps, or like when I do a live performance um, and I have here for instance my uh, little little instruments I use during performances. Um, it's it's pretty subtle, right? Yeah, they're 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 just details in the music that I accentuate with it. Um, can you can you show it? Yeah, um, so when I do live performance or I also like to do this in the studio or when I do uh, meditative reclining concerts, I use a lot of uh, small indigenous instruments. They're like dried seeds. They're actually, they are nature. They are nature itself and they have very subtle sound and it's also nice to let the sound arise from silence that is just silence and then slowly starts to live. Mm. And, and how did you get this? I collect them. I collect these instruments. I've been traveling the world and I find them or I, I, I've, I find some other travelers who are sharing their uh, their their stuff. Actually, I feel very sorry now. I don't have my, um, one of my uh, favorite instruments is uh, it's dried leaves and it's, it's a, uh, it's a shaker too, it looks like a broom, I make jokes about it, like, where is the... Mm. <laughs> but it's a, it has a beautiful sound of the wind blowing through the br branches and that's already music, you know, and then you can, you can shape it. And you can also use it, for instance, I use this one, which I also like a lot, on um, a track. It's already in there, but it's nice to uh, use it when. Uh, let me see. what you do? Uh, as an artist you mean, mm. but I, I am playing or, or making myself, I assume. Mm. Yeah, uh, well, I 
go from really quiet to fierce blow your mind music <laughs> and, and I like to play with that but I can play you a track that we did uh, I did together with Moses wait uh, that is not released yet but it's a very powerful one it's kind of a techno-ish uh, sound but more organic um, where did I put it here this for instance um. You're being squeezed in a, in a blender somewhere. I mean, I like to be pushed uh, 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 beyond my boundaries, but I don't want to be squeezed. I don't want to be slammed with a sledgehammer. You know, I'm not mm. that depressed or unhappy that I enjoy it being destroyed. You know, I, I, I like to uh, stay in tune with uh, <laughs> with myself and. Uh, the organic part of life. Um, but yeah, I can I can also play uh, very meditative stuff, and it has no beats, you know, and it's just mm. silence, and uh, might not even be for dancing. Mm. Is, is there any music you listen to yourself? Uh, a, a lot of music. Yeah, I. I there was a time I thought there was music styles that I wouldn't enjoy listening to mm -hmm. because of my prejudice. Like everybody has these musical traumas, I call them, where in your life you get confronted with a certain style of music that just hurts you for whatever reason and then you think I don't like it or people brainwash you at home and say that is bad music, that we don't listen to that music. And you're like, oh, that's no good, that music. And then until you wake up and see and then you're like oh wow in every style there is beauty you know i mean mm. not all the tricks are good not everything is great it could be a lot of nonsense there too but the essence or where it came from if you peel off the layers like an onion you will find underneath 
the treasure where it came from, the root culture of whatever st style there is in music. And I, I really, I eat everything. Really, I, 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 I just. There's no limitations in uh, what music I, I like mm. or listen to. And what defines you then, at being an old eater? What is mm. what is the essence of you there? Mm. That I'm the one looking for the the parallels and the the unifying patterns, you know, where mm. I see that, hey, this instrument sounds the same in South America in the in the Andes with the Indians. If I go there in, in, in Africa or in Asia, I can hear that same instrument in a, in a slightly different shape, but it's the same thing. I can see like, so that was right, you know? Mm -hmm. This is like, this is um, the basics. And then uh, I try to blend it again, like being the DJ, the, mm -hmm. the, the bridge builder basically. It's like my, my uh, I guess that's my real talent is to connect things together even if they're really far apart you know and that that I really enjoy a lot so yeah I'm looking for parallels I'm looking for um, yeah the, the pace of music and the history how it moves and yeah what role I fulfill in that you know in my time where I live now in this part of the world or wherever I'm at and then, and then trying to show others what you've seen in a way that they can also comprehend what it's about. And then uh, I guess uh, my mission succeeded. <laughs> That's really awesome. Mm. So in the end, you are a connector of human beings. Yeah. A unifier. Yeah, I think that is uh, in all aspects of life what I'm good at or what I, I, my underlying mission is. Mm. I want to bring people together and I want to, yeah, bring out the best, whatever I do. Thank you. Thank you.